What is going on everybody? This is Oliver C. Seneca back again with another video and as you can see this is going to be the biggest video that I've made to date. That's right, the last biggest video I made was ranking all the original 62 Goosebumps books and now here we are with all 74 of the Goosebumps TV show episodes. That's right, I spent the time watching every single Goosebumps TV episode on Netflix, so shout out to Netflix for putting those online for uh, myself and so many people to enjoy. And uh, so I watched them all and now I'm going to rank them all. So I'm going to start from number 74, which is my least favorite, down to my number one pick for my favorite, most favorite Goosebumps TV show episode. So this is going to be a long video, I'm not going to take too much time. Uh, on each episode, I will get more in detail when I get to my top five or top three or so. So stick around, watch this video, and find out if my number one pick is the same as yours. And hey, let's not waste any more time and get right into the ranking. All right, number 74, my least favorite episode of Goosebumps is Say Cheese and Die Again. Um, nothing in particular about the the story itself that I didn't like. It's just, it was just weird watching it because Ryan Gosling was the main character in the first part of this uh, episode. And then when they did Say Cheese and Die Again, it was just some other kid with long hair that kind of looked like Ryan Gosling. So I just thought the continuity was kind of weird. So number 74 is Say Cheese and Die Again. Number 73 is Return of the Mummy. Number 72 is It Came From Beneath the Sink. Number 71 and 70 are Welcome to Camp Nightmare Parts 1 and 2. Some episodes take the books a little bit more in depth and they split them up into two parts. And uh, this is the first one in the ranking where it's a two-part episode. Number 69 is Night of the Living Dummy 2. Number 68 is The Girl Who Cried Monster. Number 67 is Teacher's Pet. Now, sometimes you're going to find an episode in the uh, TV shows that are not from the original 62 Goosebumps books. I thought that they were original ones that, you know, writers made up and just put it under the Goosebumps name. But it turns out the ones that you don't recognize from the original series are actually shorter stories that were in, um, you know, compilation, Goosebumps compilations uh, a little bit later on. So check those out. If you haven't, because I, I had never heard of them until I started watching the TV episodes. Number 66 is Bride of the Living Dummy. Number 65 is Vampire Breath. This is one of my favorite books, uh, but the episode was, you know, a little bit corny, a little bit cheesy, but I enjoyed it still. Number 64 is My Hairiest Adventure. Number 63 is My Best Friend is Invisible. Number 62 and 61 are Cry of the Cats Part 1 and 2. Number 60 and number 59 are Night of the Living Dummy 3, Parts 1 and Parts 2. Number 58 is Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes. Now, this was a funny episode. I did enjoy this one. This one's almost like a cartoony live action one. There's a lot of big colors and a lot of uh, goofy characters in this one. And it goes along with the book as well, because the book, this is one of the more comedic uh, stories that's more funny than it is scary. 57 is Attack of the jack o lantern 56 is Calling All Creeps. Number 55 is Bad Hair Day and shouts out to Colin Mockery who makes a brief cameo appearance in this one. Number 54 is Go Eat Worms. Number 53 is Strained Peas. This is another one that was not an original Goosebumps book but was later featured in a compilation. Number 52 is Let's Get Invisible. Number 51 is Barking Ghost. Number 50 and 49 is Haunted Mask 2, Parts 1 and 2. Um, you know, of course, we're continuing the iconic Haunted Mask Part 1. Um, like with most sequels and stuff like that, it's not as good as the original. Number 48 is the original Say Cheese and Die with Ryan Gosling. Uh, this one's a fun one, especially the way that they designed the camera. Um, it's very kind of futuristic, and I did like the aesthetic of the... Uh, the abandoned warehouse that they go into while they're you know, going on this spooky adventure. Number 47 is The Headless Ghost. Now if you've seen my ranking video on the original Goosebumps books, you'll know where I place The Headless Ghost. Um, I don't want to do any spoilers if you're watching this video without seeing the book ranking one. So if you haven't seen the book ranking one, check out the link down below and watch that and see where I place The Headless Ghost. Number 46 is You Can't Scare Me. Number 45 is Don't Go to Sleep. 
Number 44 is Click. Now this is another uh, different Goosebumps store that wasn't featured in the original 62. Um, and if you're watching this, of course, you're probably thinking, is this similar to the Adam Sandler smash box office hit Click? And I will say it is quite similar. I'm not sure if uh, you know Adam Sandler and his company or whatever, the writers, uh, drew inspiration from this Goosebumps story uh, that was on TV. Um, I'm not sure if this Goosebump story borrowed the idea of a remote that you can control people with from something prior to this. I'm not sure, but it is very, very similar. Number 43 is Awesome Ants. This one has a uh, good uh, little twist at the end there. Number 42 and 41 are How I Got My Shrunken Head Parts 1 and 2. I enjoyed uh, these parts. It's kind of a fun little jungle adventure one. Uh, and I did think it was interesting too. Um, and I can't remember if this was in the book or not, uh, but this deals with, you know, the, the main character's kid, his mom is actually divorced and is uh, looking to, you know, date and stuff. And I'm not sure if this was the first time Goosebumps had ever touched on, you know, a main character coming from divorced parents and stuff like that. But I, I thought that was uh, an interesting part of the story. Numbers 40 through 38 are the three parts of the Chillology trilogy. Um, but I actually put them in order from part three down to part one, part one being the best out of the trilogy. Uh, this was a fun little interesting uh, story where these kids get sucked into this uh, playset, this like model of a town. And uh, again, this is one that was not in the original Goosebumps books. This was on one of the uh, other compilations. So I had not... Um, knew about the story, the chillology, but uh, I enjoyed watching uh, parts one through three, although I enjoyed them uh, in the reverse order. Number 37 is Don't Wake Mummy. Number 36 is Shocker on Shock Street. This is another one of the stories that has a nice little twist at the end. Number 35 is The House of No Return. This is a classic childhood initiation uh, episode, and of course, the initiation goes terribly wrong when something spooky goes down in the house. Of course, the house of no return. What's going on in that house? Number 34 is Be Careful What You Wish For. This is another great um, TV episode, but also a great book as well. Check out the uh, the book ranking video um, where I put this one because this is another great, great story. Good lesson uh, in this episode, and I didn't think the casting of the mysterious old lady was uh, very effective. Number 33 and 32 are Deep Trouble Parts 2. Number 33 and 32 are Deep Trouble, Parts 1 and 2. Numbers 31 and 30 are Attack of the Mutant, Part 1 and 2. This is another fun episode, a lot of big, vibrant colors. Uh, this is the one where the kids, uh, who loves comic books, he gets sucked into a comic book, he has to defeat the villain, he has to you know, help the superhero, and I love the uh, set design on this one. Very colorful, uh, much like the cover of the book itself, so I thought the production team did a great job taking, you know, the imagery from the book and putting it visually in the TV episode. Number 29 is The Cuckoo Clock of Doom. This is another one that has a good lesson to it, and I thought it was effective how they filmed this one. Number 28 is Phantom of the Auditorium. Number 27 is Piano Lessons Can Be Murder. Number 26 is The Blob That Ate Everyone. Number 25 is An Old Story. Now, I have to tell you, this is probably one of the strangest episodes uh, in the entire series, in my opinion, um, about these kids who are being watched by their great aunt, I believe. But their great aunt has these two single old lady friends who are looking for husbands. So the great aunt uh, gives these kids that she's watching uh, this prune concoction that has some kind of aging uh, ingredient in it and it's turning these little kids into old men but they're they're not getting any taller or anything like that they're just tiny old old men who then this great aunt's friends want to marry and put them on their retirement plan and pension and all that stuff and I thought it was so bizarre but I couldn't help but laugh as I was watching it and that's why I had to rank it as number 25 because it was just completely uh, bonkers uh, of a tale but Check it out and see for yourself. 25, an old story. Number 24, Ghost Beach. Good book, good TV episode, and uh, I thought this was one of the few that I, I, I believe was 
trying to be, you know, just a standard traditional scary episode. Number 23 and number 22 are the Ghost Next Door Parts 1 and 2. This is another uh, more in-depth from the book, you know, putting it on screen, and I enjoyed these parts, and, I, and again, I think this is another one that they, they legitimately tried to make it spooky and entertaining in that regard, and I think they did a good job. Number 21 and 20 are the Perfect School Parts 1 and 2. Now, this is another example of a story that was not featured in the original 62, but this was an interesting one um, where this kid is misbehaving and he has to go to this school, and it turns out they're doing something a little bit more sinister uh, than the parents believe they were doing. They weren't just making their kids behave better. There was something else, something kind of spooky and creepy going on. So check out The Perfect School, Parts 1 and 2. Number 19 and 18 is Werewolf Skin, Parts 1 and 2. Another good story here that goes a little bit more in depth. Uh, good stuff. Then coming up at number 17 and 16, keeping the werewolf theme going, we got the Werewolf of Fever Swamp Parts 1 and 2. Number 15 is Haunted House Game. Now this is another one that was not in the original uh, book set, but this is a super, super interesting uh, episode. I thought it was really creative. These kids get sucked into this board game that they have to play and solve all these puzzles and riddles and stuff, and I thought it was done extremely well. And uh, even though the effects and some of the camera work was, you know, dated and corny, I thought it was really, really cool how they did uh, this scene with a fishing line and trying to get down to this doorknob, um, you know, by casting the line out. And, you know, the camera works kind of like, ugh, you know, bizarro kind of 90s style. But, you know, the whole thing I thought was really creative and I really enjoyed this one. Number 14 and 13 are A Night in Terror Tower, parts 1 and 2. Now, I believe this is one of the first episodes I've ever seen of Goosebumps back in the day. And uh, I have to say, uh, they do hold up. Uh, definitely creepy. You have a situation here where the kids are overseas. They're in London, England, doing some old uh, English tourism. And they go to, of course, the Tower of Terror, where all the torturing went on back in the medieval times. And uh, I think it's just a super fun episode and a little bit creepy at times. I think this one is probably, you know, and of course I'm biased because it's one of the first ones I've seen, uh, but I definitely think it holds up uh, better than some of the other episodes. Number 12 is How to Kill a Monster. Number 11 is More Monster Blood. Now, I thought this was going to be called Monster Blood Part 2 because the next one on the ranking here is number 10, Monster Blood Part 1. However, um, for whatever reason, they just called it More Monster Blood, but really it's Part 2. Um, in my head, in my as what do they call that head cannon? I don't know, but more monster blood is number eleven, and then number ten we have monster blood part one, um, which kind of balances in between spookiness and cheesiness. Um, of course, you have the effects uh, from back in the day when the dog gets giant and he's peeking through the door, and it looks uh, looks dated as ever. But I do love the aesthetic of the episode. I love the. Uh, you know, I think it's like the great aunt or grandma, you know. Let me just take a quick moment here to talk about Goosebumps as a whole. I love Goosebumps. I love the TV shows, the books. I love the, the toys, the collectibles, and all that stuff. Um, I love it all. And what's great is these stories all have kind of the same setup. It's usually a kid. Their parents are going out of town or their parents are going out to dinner. And it's always some creepy grandma or grandparent or great aunt or great uncle or some mysterious relative that the kids aren't aware of uh, having to watch them and um, you know it, with monster blood it's no different because you know this this kid's going to uh, this creepy old lady's house and of course she's got some monster blood hanging around and he wants to play with it he doesn't know what it does and then up oh, it's too late the dog is giant so now he has to figure out how to get everything uh, back in place, but uh, I just wanted to say that's just a fun little observation I've noticed that the skeleton of all these stories usually revolve around somebody having to stay with some spooky, spooky relative, and it's fair because come on, we all know hanging out with an old, spooky, mysterious relative is scary, and we all we all wouldn't know what to do. Now let's get back to the ranking. Number nine and number eight are Welcome to Dead House Parts one and two. That's right, the first book in the series is on the TV. It's spooky. This is another one that I watched, one of the first episodes that I watched growing up, and I remember being very, very scary. I think it was scarier than even uh, Night in Terror Tower. Um, and of course, it's not 
too scary these days, but I think aesthetically the way they set up some of the characters, some of the uh, ghoulish looking folks in there, I think holds up somewhat and I think it's still a solid, solid two piece episode. All right, number seven and number six are One Day at Horrorland parts one and two. That's right, we are getting into these parts one and part two as we're coming down the top 10. Um, this is another iconic set of episodes. I mean, I would say other than Slappy the Dummy, the aesthetic of Horrorland, the amusement park, is something that is like the face of Goosebumps, in my opinion. You love the colors, you love the monsters. It's scary in its idea that they're trapped in this amusement park, but then you watch the episode and you see that these monsters have their own game show, they have their own personalities, um, and they're acting like cartoons, and it takes away some of the scares, but you're still hoping that this family can get out of this, uh, this strange amusement park. But uh, Check out One Day at Horland. If you haven't seen the TV episode, I think you'll find it to be a lot of fun. And uh, maybe you'll agree with me that it's one of the more prominent uh, pieces of imagery in the Goosebumps series as a whole. All right, my friends. Well, now here we are at the top five. That's right, my top five favorite Goosebumps TV episodes of all time. And number five is coming in at the Scarecrow Walks at Midnight. Now, I had mentioned some other episodes before of, show, of episodes that are trying to be more scary than they are silly and I think that's what's going on with number five the scarecrow walks at midnight um, even though it still has that corny 90s level to it I feel like the aesthetic of this one the way it was filmed almost reminded me of like a early 2000s slasher cornfield slasher kind of film and uh, I just really love the aesthetic of the whole thing I thought it was creepy uh, I thought the grandparents were you know the way they acted were great and um, the book's great too. I also love the title, The Scarecrow Walks at Midnight. Classic, classic Goosebumps title in my opinion, and it's a great episode as well. Number four and number three are the original Haunted Mask Part 1 and Part 2. Now some people are probably out there thinking to themselves, how could this not be numbers two and one? Well, we'll get to that in just a moment. But the original Haunted Mask, one of the most iconic books, one of the most iconic stories in the Goosebumps series. Um, is right here at my number, uh, excuse me, number four and number three, that's right. So this one, not only is it spooky and it holds up in, in its factor of this girl being controlled by this mask, it's also one of the deepest Goosebumps episodes because it really has a deep message about, you know, acceptance and loving yourself and stuff like that. And I thought for a, for a 90s kids horror show, um, it actually had a deep, deep message like that, and I found that to be uh, um, compelling in a lot of ways. And of course, there are messages and other stories as well. But I feel like this one, being such a you know a two-parter, a more meatier in depth from the book, um, you you get a greater sense of this young girl, you know, really trying to you know accept herself and, and her friendships and, and you know making her way through her young adult life. So I thought that was really interesting. That's what I got from that. Um, and maybe I'm looking into it too deeply, uh, but um, Haunted Mask Parts 1 and 2 I think are special, special episodes, not only because of the aesthetic of the mask, of course, but just because of the message that's in it, and I find it to be, you know, a very progressive piece of Goosebumps history. All right, my friends, well, if you've made it this far, and if you've been paying close attention, you may or may not know what my number one pick is. Now, of course, it's actually pick number two and number one because it's a two-parter episode that is my favorite episode in the entire series. And, of course, I'm talking about Stay Out of the Basement, parts one and parts two. That's right. That is my favorite episode of all 74 of the Goosebumps TV show episodes. Um... For me, this is another one I watched back in the day when I was young, also very scary, but the imagery is what makes this the best because even though it's been decades since I've seen it on TV or on the old VHS tapes wherever I saw it, um, I'll never forget the green basement. The basement is so green with the lights and all these flowers and all this this weird sciencey stuff going on and as I rewatched it, you know, in preparation for this video, you know, I forgot how spooky the father is. You know, as I broke off before and was talking about how your the, the characters are always staying with a grandparent or a great uncle, I think this is one of the very, very few Goosebumps, uh, you know, shows and books where the parent is actually the villain. 
where you're not sure what the parent is all about. What's the father up to? You know, is it really their dad? Is he being controlled by these plants? Is it a science experiment gone wrong? Um, and it's such a personal thing because it's your own father. You know, what do you do? And uh, of course, usually the mom's not listening or, you know, she's away somewhere and it's just up to the kids to face their father, which is scary in its own right. Um, you know, de dealing with your dad one on one like that. So, Stay Out of the Basement is just a great, great story. And of course, you know, there's twists and turns in it. Uh, but the thing that always stands out to me is that imagery of, of, you know, of course, stay out of the basement because when they go in the basement, they see that creepy, that green light and all those plants everywhere. And you don't know what is going to pop out when you're uh, trying to check out on your dear old dad. So that's it, my friends. My number one pick there, stay out of the basement parts one and two. What did you think? Do you agree with my list? Is your number one also stay out of the basement? Or maybe you've got it all backwards. Maybe your number one is say cheese and die again and, they, and you don't care that Ryan Gosling didn't come back for part two. Let me know down below what your favorite episodes are. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you watch the whole thing, I really appreciate that as well because these videos, they do take a lot of time and effort to watch the stuff and rank them and think about, you know, what's the worst and what's the best. But again, I enjoyed watching it. I enjoyed putting this video together. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing. Hey, and we'll see you in the next one.